Hi guys, it's me, Rowan Huang. Um, we're supposed to take turn, but you know, we decided for this period of time until we figure things out, it's gonna be mostly on my page, I guess. Yes, yeah. that would be good. I'm but, just trying to figure a few things out with my with my challenge. So we're gonna stay on Joanne's uh, ruins. Uh, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> just call me whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, so. Teal and Nick gonna be on my side. So as usual, it's my pleasure to have Dana over and then we can discuss some topic every week. And you know, this week, <laughs> we're gonna talk about how to stay in love. This is actually not an easy question. So, no. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on. If everybody know how to stay in love, then you know, nobody need any help about love relationship problem isn't it so I, I guess so you know so actually when you come up with this question i'm like you know what i would really like to hear what dana <laughs> got to say so dana why don't you start <laughs> <laughs> well i guess i guess the 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 more important question is if we were in love to begin with right yeah. because um a lot of us marry for reasons of not being alone or mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, or have a ch child or whatever. And don't get me wrong because uh, through astrology or I mean anything in life, children have to be born. So yeah. that's totally fine. <laughs> really? uh, they have to come and then uh, the person yeah. that comes along, it is what it is. Yeah. And um, I was thinking about this question for a reason of astrology because that kind of uh, kept popping lately how struggles are pretty easy to figure out in chart yeah because um when we have um a saturn traveling through our marriage house mm -hmm. usually there is something um to learn yeah and the first marriage I, for those of you that don't know is house seventh house second marriage is ninth house and so on third marriage is eleventh house and hopefully nobody has okay. a forced marriage yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're in love all the time okay but um so so through those cycles uh we are supposed to learn how to maintain or how to stay in love how to figure out how to keep that flame going how to keep the relationship going yeah. and if we don't go by any astrology or psychic i mean if we don't judge blame and criticize yes uh, we are halfway there <laughs> <laughs> wow i think it's human nature we want to judge and criticize yes. we all have our pattern right yes. so you know just to tell other people like don't judge don't criticize it's almost like don't do that and then we were you know initially want to do that the more you tell me not to do it the more i want to do that right yeah. so i would say how to stay in love like you mentioned something that you were able to see the obstacle on the chart for example so mm. i would assume um your point of view is by knowing your chart and then two people willing to work through it or work together that's how they manage to stay in love is that possible? Well, I, I, I think that that's almost like step two. I, I would think that step one would be that the person who is struggling, because that doesn't mean that the other per partner is struggling. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. we struggle and the other person is so completely oblivious. And when yeah. we complain, because we complain all the time and we don't resolve it, they kind of think, oh, yeah, there he or she goes again. Yeah. And then they, they dismiss it. After a while, the partner dismisses your complaints because if it's constant and you don't figure it out where it's coming from uh, and yeah. you blaming them. So so I think I'm not saying don't blame, judge and criticize. Figure out why you're blaming, judging and criticizing mm -hmm. and then fix that. And then obviously, if you can stay calm, uh, then the other person in a majority of cases yeah, yeah. Uh, will adjust your behavior uh, okay. to your new behavior. If uh, they don't, then, then there might be a bigger problem that might be rooted um, elsewhere as well. But um, I think what you were saying is right. What I, what I kind of am trying to mm -hmm. explain is that there are always obstacles in life because yeah. through astrology, we always have those cycles where we're supposed to learn and grow. Yeah. So not to take it as a, the relationship is not working, but yeah. rather think about it. Okay. I need to figure this out for myself. So I am happier. So I feel better. And mm -hmm. then uh, it will reflect on the other person um, mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> well, I know nothing about astrology, so I'm not able to really help you with that. But I would say uh, something similar is if two soul coming to uh, this life and be in a relationship, you basically in the soul level, you come to agreement, you want to work through something, right? You come with an intention, especially with two of you are in a relationship. So to simply answer how to stay in love, in love, <laughs> I would say, you know, Dana just mentioned it earlier before. I mean, life got all kind of obstacles. Sometimes can be mortgage, sometimes can be child, sometimes can be in-laws and everything all coming your way, disease, whatever coming your way. It's easy like we're so wrapped around by all those stuff around us. We forget how to love. You know, it starts with we even forget how to love ourselves. Therefore, we don't know how to love other people. So if simply ask answering this particular question, how to stay in love. I would say the best way I can come up with is try to um, create the environment that you are in love or you feel love. You know, if you're just gonna wrap yourself around with all the obstacles in your life, it's hard to feel love. But if, you know, in daily basis, even among all those chaotic things happening around you, you will have a moment for yourself or you will have a moment with your partner. Like, you know, I enjoy the candlelight dinner. Let's make that happen. You know, I enjoy a walk. Let's try to make that happen. Or I enjoy a cup of coffee just for a brief 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, that moment I feel love. I think it's more important for people to be in love. <laughs> you have to feel yes. love in order to be in love. Yeah. So what do you think? Anna? Exactly. I was actually, that's a very good point because I was thinking as you were saying how to stay in love and you were going like this. I'm like, I guess the important part also is where you, are you in love? Like where are you in love to begin with? Right. Because yeah. if you weren't, so then you can work on it, but it's going to be a little bit harder to mm -hmm. do. And, um, and I think that there are two things uh, that you can always think about it this way, that you can either be angry yeah. or sad or feel that you are not being loved and appreciated, mm -hmm. or you can ask for what you want. Yeah. And then you will either receive it or you are not. Yeah. But if you don't ask, the other person can never read your mind because yeah. other people are not mind readers. And when you are sending unclear message, and yeah. that's probably the same through psychic uh uh, theory is just that when you're not sending a clear message, uh, you're not going to receive what you're asking for. You know, yeah. manifestation would apply to this uh, law of yeah. attraction, all these things. So I think the most important thing is to first figure out, like, are you actually in love or where are you in love? <laughs> or are you in love? Do you yeah. want to stay there yeah. and then once you figure that out then you start working on the like if if you get upset or you if you feel like judging um you know criticizing or blaming i'm not saying stop doing that but what i'm saying is find the solution so yeah. whatever the solution is for you not to feel that way mm -hmm. then you can ask for it so uh, yeah. for example if somebody um like doesn't if you want somebody to bring you flowers um, I used to my uh, ask my um, uh, late husband for flowers because every time I felt like bringing flowers, I either bought them myself and I was happy about it, yeah. or I asked him to buy them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so these are like small little things yeah. where it will turn the fact that you're gonna think, okay, he uh, he or she doesn't love me anymore because they don't do this for yeah. me anymore that yeah. they used to. So life gets busy and 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 a relationship go to different stages so just yeah. um if you can calmly ask instead of being angry that it's not done or that it hasn't yeah. been given to you i think that's a first step to to figuring out how to stay yeah. in love i know it's so funny that you were mentioning something and then it was <clears throat> sorry it was kind of wrap around in my head i'm thinking you were saying that we are not my reader but what's so funny is even though we know it's true when we are in relationship to a lengthy point of time, we expect our other half to be a mind reader. Yeah. Not like you read my mind, but you should know what I like. Mm -hmm. As, you know, you've been dating me for like five years, 20 years. Come on, don't you know? Do you still have to ask me? 
So mm -hmm. I would say the um, the key thing, which also Dana just kind of mentioned it, the key thing that kind of make that love feeling go away is by the expectation. It's through this time we were together, and I just assume you should know. You should know I like the flower. You should know I like this. You should know I'd rather do that and do that. It's all that feeling and expectation that we won't. Uh, our other half to become a psychic or a mind reader that's really deteriorating the relationship don't you say yes absolutely absolutely yeah. and you know like as you were saying it like i i could hear my mom growing up every time she would get upset with my dad she would tell me he should know he should know and i remember as a kid because you don't really have all the concepts of love and relationships you know, because they sleep with me i know as a kid, I remember that is such a ridiculous statement from my mother and it kind of stuck with me uh, all, all these years. Like, how is he supposed to know what he should do when yeah. uh, you're not really telling him, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and because I never took as a kid in consideration that, yeah. uh, that he should know because they have history. Yeah. I just thought today, how does how is he supposed to know something that yeah. he's saying he should when you didn't tell him? So yeah. it, it's kind of um, you know, uh, and and <laughs> yeah, I am yeah. communicator. You're communicator. So there are a lot of people. I would also say that love, being in love or loving somebody, is also presented through through different ways. Some yeah. people have to get present. Some people have to communicate like everybody's different there there are different uh reasons so also what is very important to find out what your partner's feeling in love is and what yours is because yeah. once you know what you're feeling in love and and feeling like you're appreciated is comes to what you are saying joan is the expectations once mm -hmm. you know what it is that you need yeah. you can ask for it yeah. and then and then you can stop expecting the other person to know what yeah. you need because um you can always ask for it That's well simple. actually the other example that i often deal with is i tell people exactly what i want or exactly what i don't like they say that's mm -hmm. not what you want and then my mind thinking no i think i know what i want Mm -hmm. But then, they, because the answer is not what they want to hear, therefore they already make a mindset that's mm -hmm. not what you want. So I think it goes both ways. When I have expectation of them, they have expectation how yes. I should be. So I would say, really, the best way to stay in love is treat every day like a brand new day. Treat the person that you are with like a brand new person every day. I mean, maybe yesterday he was good. She was good mood. This day she is in bad mood, so she's totally a brand new person. So. I will agree with Dana. A thorough conversation would definitely be the key, hey, for two people to be yes. in love. Always communicate, always talking. Like today, you are like, you know, maybe the grumpy, bitchy yes. type of person. Tomorrow, maybe you are a nice, <laughs> friendly person. <laughs> yeah. Right? I, I so. really love what you are saying that it's, it's every take every day because because you basically might be asking for something and the other person doesn't know how to communicate so yeah. they might just think okay i'm gonna buy you flowers so as long as you need um you know what what you need and they know what they need mm -hmm. then you can figure it out because mm -hmm. you, you just simply ask for it even if you don't yeah. if communication is not your love language uh yeah. you know there are a lot of different love languages there's like as I said, buying presents or going on vacations or doing things together uh, or like there is, I don't know, cooking together. Everybody feels loved yeah. differently. So yeah. as you said, every day uh, is a new day and you start and you pay attention. You figure out what you need, what they need. And, and the expectations, it's exactly what you said. Yeah. If you stop having expectation, that doesn't mean that they're going to stop having expectations. No. Yeah. But if you don't expect, then they won't expect eventually either because the pattern yeah, of behavior time. will change yeah, between sure. the two of you right yeah and, for you, sure. and it, what you are saying if somebody says to you no that's not what you feel that yeah. you just like <laughs> nice. to me i just it makes me laugh and i say yeah. well i actually do know what i need yeah yeah well i say that all the time too i'm like i think i know myself better than you know me but you know yeah. that's okay yeah. but then again i have to i have a one last question for you but yeah. as i could say right you and me can talk forever. So if any of you are interesting to follow us, you know, 
it's broadcast. We try to keep it as short time as possible. But if any of you would like to talk deeper with us and then listen to our discussion any further, you can join us on Clubhouse every Tuesday at 3.30. I think, you know, Dana, you and me agree we're going to talk about this. This is a big topic, right? So yeah, we're going to talk about topic, this topic yeah. uh, next week. Just yeah. really exaggerated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, before we close in, I do have a question here for you that someone mm -hmm. had for you. Um, so I think you can answer it. So how we know how can we know to make a spark in a relationship according to the astrology? For example, is it based on our moon, Mars, or anything? So, you know, is it any way on the astrology chart they are able to figure out how they can create a spark? Can you give them a very last minute tip? Create a spark that there is, there is very, uh, there are so many ways. Um, like if I say one very simple one, if your yeah. sun sign is in the same sign as your partner's mm -hmm. um, moon, then it's it's a good um, it's a good way to start the relationship. <laughs> yeah. uh, for the longer lasting, Jupiter is planet of luck. If it's in a good angle, yeah. 30, 60, or 120 degrees with the other person's Venus, that means that, mm -hmm. uh, that luck and romance and money are going to be good between two of you. Um, that's another one. Um, like, there are so many. Uh, <laughs> oh, we got to say some, right? I could, I could keep going. Another I know you one keep is going. obviously, <laughs> you know, I would not go by the signs of um sun signs only because it's very general however there are a lot of people that uh, stay within their signs so water signs uh, stay together and from my point of view there's not enough fraction and attraction there's a lot of emotion so as long as they can figure that out two earth signs they because when you have the same sign with you like either um water earth or fire then you will understand each other more it's like you know each other when yeah. you meet it's one of those then you will have the same thing with the last with the past life oh my you're god you're gonna feel like you know them somehow so yeah. they are at 90 degrees people so yeah tons well, of different ways as i say we can talk about this forever so many of you if you are interested to dig any you know deeper <laughs> join <laughs> us on clubhouse next tuesday at 3 30 p.m pst so i'm pretty sure we have uh, longer hours instead yeah, of just 15 yeah. minutes try to wrap it up so again dana thank you for joining me on the broadcast and thank then you, any of you who would like to follow dana go to check on her facebook i think her facebook is dana richie eight right yes yeah so you know follow her and get all the updates she sometimes offer online free training you know it's good to give it a try so yeah. Till then, we'll see you guys next week. Bye now. Okay, bye.